Way before I started working with fire, it was people. That's what got me excited. And when I'm in the process of making a piece like this, I will choose the wood, I get all the pieces together, I get the fire, I get the fuel, I get everything that I need. And then my portraits, again, are done from life. So I will have a live model come, they will stand next to a blank piece of wood and it is created entirely in that moment. And when that's happening, that's my favorite thing in the world. I am with that person, I'm with my art, and everything else disappears. And that's all there is for the duration of that portrait. Welcome to One, a VOA live podcast. On this show, special guests guide us on a journey that will inspire you to see the world differently and how they became one through their art. This episode is brought to you by Artis Pro, the only platform to manage your entire entertainment career. People join Artis Pro to track their media rights, buy and book work, and connect with anyone in the media and entertainment industry around the world. Be seen, be heard, and be found at artispro.com. All right, uh, my name is Zachary Aronson. I am from Los Angeles and I'm an artist who paints with fire. I use blow torches to burn portraits and figurative work into wood panels using a technique that I developed that I call open flame pyrography. All right, so pyrography, you might have heard of it actually, is the art form most commonly thought of as, well, most commonly used as drawing with an electric bit. So people will take heated metal and burn images into wood. You might have had a wood burning kit as a kid or something like that. A lot of people have tried it. And that is what you traditionally hear, of, think of when you think of pyrography. Um, mine version's a little different. It's, um, I use blow torches to burn the images in. So I used open flame. I put open flame before the word for my own uses. Pyrography, is a word that comes from Latin roots, which is translated as writing or drawing with fire. So it seemed fitting for the medium that I created. I've always been drawing. I've been drawing ever since I was a little kid. I grew up knowing I was gonna be an artist. I was just sure about this and I built my life around that. And when I was in college, I had a drawing class and I forgot to bring paper. So I'm wandering around the art school and I'm looking for something to draw on and I find this scrap piece of wood by a dumpster. So I did a charcoal drawing on it and I really liked the results so I started buying wood to draw on and kept doing it. And a couple months later, I'm working on this sculpture made out of wood. And I'm trying to figure out how to do this certain illustration on it. Pencil wasn't picking up. I didn't have the patience to wait for the paint to dry. So I thought of using a little butane torch that I had for silversmithing to burn a silhouette into the background of the sculpture. And it worked really well. So I started integrating this technique into my drawings on wood. Mainly just for the backgrounds, for black areas. I wasn't doing any intricate work with it. But I started utilizing this technique more and more on my drawings on wood. And at a certain point, I just stopped using pencils. And I realized that I could do everything that I needed to do using only the fire. And since then, that was about probably eight or nine years ago now. And since then, the technique has just continued to develop every single year. And now I'm able to do, um, do things with fire, like with a blowtorch on wood that I wouldn't have thought of as physically possible when I first started. The intricacies and the details and the, the shading and everything that can be created using only an open flame is actually pretty remarkable. I think like, again, I, I, um, 
I grew, I grew as a person. I was, my entire life I knew, just I had the certainty, I'm gonna be an artist. That was a given. Everything else was done around that. So I think starting out, like I didn't know how I was gonna set myself apart. I was always interested in portraiture and technical work. I taught myself to draw from drawing the, from the sketchbooks of the Renaissance masters. It's like, that's what I enjoyed doing. I would always have a sketch pad with me. I would draw the person next to me. I would draw whoever I was, and I have thousands and thousands of drawings that I've kept at home. But again, I wasn't unique. And you really do need something like that to succeed in the art world, I believe. And I just kind of stumbled upon this medium, which set me aside in a certain way. So I think developing that was a struggle at times. I, there was no one to teach me. There was no guidebook, no videos to watch. I just had to figure out everything for myself through lots of trial and error, over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of portraits and burnings. And I had to figure out how, what torches to use, how close I could get it to the fire, how fast I needed to move it. Um, what happens if I use this one and then this one? What happens if I do it at this angle or I move it at this rate? And it's like, it's all of this like experimenting occurred, I think, and it was really fun. So it was challenging, but it was, um, it was an exciting process at the same time. So there are different challenges that come up while I'm working, um, from the just convincing people to let me use fire on their property, to um, dealing with the elements, having the wind knock out my torches or blow over my artwork while it's standing up outside, or having someone tell me that that doesn't meet fire code or everything, and having to learn all of this and to keep the art keep my art the way I want it to be, but also have it be accepted um, on a technical level, I think, in many different environments. So I work as a, as a visual artist, I work as a performance artist now, that kind of happened by accident, actually. Um, I have my master's in set design, so I, that happened when I built these giant installation sculptures, built out of hundreds of these panels, hundreds of these portraits. And they just got to the scale where people started to perform in them. And anyways, long story short, Dean of the Theater School at CalArts tracks me down and invites me to the MFA set design program, which I didn't even know existed. And now I'm a set designer, you know? So it's just been this weird journey of all of these different, like, totally unplannable little instances that led me to where I am today developing this new and unique uh, medium. I definitely see a similarity between my artwork and some very ancient artwork, some very early primitive artwork drawn in caves, carved with stone. I really see that and I think my work has a very primal nature to it that can be very like visceral and emotional to people and I love that about it. I think it often has this very timeless feel. And when people look at it, they don't, they don't know how it's been made, but they, they know it's natural, they know it's wood, they can, if they look closely, they see that it's burnt and it's very, very elemental. And I think people relate to that. And you'll see this and you'll think to yourself, when was this made? And it could have been in any century, in any millennia, you know? And Cavemen probably could have figured out how to do something like this if they set their minds to it, you know? Or someone could have hundreds of years ago when they first figured out blow torches or certain candles even, but that, that's a whole nother technique actually, but called fumage, strangely enough. But um, I think um, there is that very sort of deep, raw, primitive feel to my work that I really love to embrace. And I think specifically with fire, like when you dive deeper into it. Fire is this element that we, we love and we fear. And it's very like visceral, raw, and we're fascinated by it and we're staring to, at it as an infant and we need it to, to eat, we need it to stay warm and it's also destructive. And it will burn down everything. And so it has this 
we have this very like intimate, like this close relationship with fire, just as human beings, and I um, and I really love embracing that and like finding a new way to work with fire. And um, I also really love the concept of creating something new, creating something like this with what is thought of as a traditionally destructive element and using it to make something new and make something beautiful. I'm really inspired by people. I think it all starts with that and that's what gets me excited. And I use, I love portraits, I love figures, I love the human body and sort of figuring out those sort of subtleties that make us unique. And I, the sort of solving the puzzle and putting the pieces together has always fascinated me. It's like something that I can build. But, um, so that's the first step. So, and way before I started working with fire, it was people. That's what got me excited. And when I'm in the process of making a piece like this, I will choose the wood, I get all the pieces together, I get the fire, I get the fuel, I get everything that I need. And then my portraits, again, are done from life. So I will have a live model come, they will stand next to a blank piece of wood and it is created entirely in that moment. And when that's happening, that's my favorite thing in the world. I am with that person, I am with my art, and everything else disappears. And that's all there is for the duration of that portrait. Time is gone, I don't get hungry, I don't get tired, I lose track of everything, and I sort of like slip into this like meditative flow state almost. It's very therapeutic, but I, um, I don't think about it. It feels like I'm channeling something, honestly. Like I take the torches, I don't plan where they're gonna be. I just kind of like start in the middle and I just let it happen. And I see my hands just doing all of these motions with a torch sometimes that I've never done before. And it just kind of works. And I just trust in that process and I know that it's gonna work out. And as I do more and more portraits, they just keep getting better very, very rapidly. I'll often get asked, often by the model actually, like, what's my favorite piece? What's, what am I most proud of? And it is almost entirely, if I had to pick a favorite piece, one of the last few portraits that I've done. And this has been true for hundreds of portraits. So the consistency at which they're getting better is actually kind of remarkable to myself and I keep pushing past what I thought the level of detail that was possible with this medium was. But um, again, it's not, it's not something calculated. It's not something that can be broken down and replicated. It's just something that happens when I'm in my element. So when I'm making art, it is this all-consuming process and in that, in that state, I honestly feel like I am my sort of best and truest self. And I am growing and I am sharing to the best of my ability what my passion is with the world. So I think it's about surrendering control. Because especially when working with fire, which is this wild, intense element, it's not something that can be tamed. It's something that has to be collaborated with and worked with and there's a give and a take, and I feel like I'm um, guiding the flame in a certain way, but at a certain level, it's gonna do its own thing. And I need to adapt and be very fluid in my process in order to guide the flame in the direction that I need it to go to create my vision. And I think in this process, in this practice, in doing all of these portraits, I've really been able to surrender to that a lot more than I used to be. Like drawing, technical drawing is a very controlled experience. It is just the pencil, it's the paper, and I, the steps that I take are entirely my own and my own decisions. With the fire, it's something new. It's something entirely different and it's, it, that excites me. So it's not just working with the fire and having controlling that, but with the wood grain, which 
always burns differently. And all the compositions are based around the pre-existing wood grain. And certain areas are gonna be are gonna burn faster than others because they're denser. And that's different in the types of wood. So I've been like developing my relationship with earth, with wood, and my relationship with fire and air in a certain way from the torches. It's a very very like visceral experience almost and I get so lost in it and in that moment when I'm when I've surrendered to these elements I am I feel very at peace I feel very um I don't know very like very creative like I don't have any boundaries like like anything is possible and I love sharing that experience with others and not only like having them witness it, but just like showing them the result, showing them something new. And um, also on a personal level, like I know how good that feeling is, like getting lost in your creative element. So I find myself seeking out other artists and to try to find them in that experience. So I go and I'm, try to find dance shows or a lot of live music and I'm going out there and I'm looking at these people and I don't care what you're singing. I don't care if you're doing comedy or you have a beautiful voice or you're playing the piano or you're doing interpretive dance or poetry. It doesn't matter. It's just like I love watching like people's faces as they get lost in their art and the rest of the world disappears for them too because it's the best feeling in the world. So when I'm making art, I kind of turn into this like vessel for this creativity to flow through me. And in that I am, I am someone else. I'm my best self. And I think it is fair to say that I am maybe even my truest self when I'm in that mode. And it's, um, oh, and it's something absolutely amazing and it's something that I crave and it's something that I need the same way I need to eat and the way, same way I need to sleep and I need to breathe. It is something that is addictive and wonderful, you know? So that's, uh, and it brings out the best parts of me. I think I am one with my art. My art is the physical evidence, the physical representation of my creative process. It's what's left behind. And I think it's wonderful to put out a finished result, to have a, a portrait on wood that you can hang on your wall. But my favorite thing is that creative process and get, getting lost in the art and in the elements and, and surrendering to that. And that's why I do it. That's why I make art. It's something that I need. It's something that I crave. And this, this art, the pyrographs, which I love, you know, that's just what's left behind. And I think it's kind of a wonderful thing that as a visual artist, you are able to leave behind something, an object, something permanent that is representative of that creative state. So yeah, I think I am one with my art. Thanks for tuning into One. If you like what you've heard, like, comment, subscribe, and share. You can also find this episode at rtspro.com slash VOA.